Hey guys, Blair with Revit Auto, and in this video we're going to be showing you how you can replace your rear brake pads and rotors on a 2014 RAV4. The first step is to chalk the front wheels, and then go ahead and use your jack on the lower control arm to raise the vehicle. And then once you have the vehicle raised, you'll use your jack stand to support it. So we're going to use a 21 millimeter socket and an impact gun. If you don't have this, you can leave the car on the ground and remove it with a half inch breaker bar. But since we have an impact gun, we'll go ahead and remove this. And now the last one is a special key, lock key. So we'll just get that fitted in. Remove that one as well. From there, we'll just move the wheel and tire out of the way. With the wheel and tire out of the way, we'll go ahead and decompress this piston here on this caliper using a screwdriver. Now we'll use our flathead screwdriver and we'll pry against the rotor and the pad surface and we'll pull towards us very slowly here because the fluid that's in this caliper is now going back into the reservoir underneath the hood. And once we get it here tight, We'll just go ahead and reposition and go one more time. Now that's off, we'll go ahead and remove our caliper itself. So the caliper is held on with two 14 millimeter bolts, one on the top and one on the bottom. We'll go ahead and just break them loose. And I'll set this one down. Now typically what I'll do is I'll leave one in before I actually remove the other one so that the caliper won't twist on me. Now with these two out, I'll just set them to the side here so I don't lose them. Then I'll take my caliper and I'll rest it on the lower control arm just here. If you're nervous about it falling, you can use a bungee cord, bungee cord it to the axle. It won't go anywhere. So now that we have that out, take note before you remove any of these pads here that you have a wear indicator and which side it's on. So the wear indicator on this side is on the bottom of either one. And what that means here is when your brake pads get low, it has this little piece of metal that squeaks against the rotor. To remove the caliper bracket, you'll use a 17 millimeter socket and you'll want to use a half inch breaker bar. They're located just on the back side of these and I'll use my half inch breaker bar here to get proper leverage to go ahead and make this job easy. And I'll loosen the bottom one as well. With them both loose, I'll just cheat and use my 3 8 electric ratchet to make the job faster. That's one. And two. And then the bracket comes out. Now before you go ahead and you replace these clips. If you don't have any new hardware, you can clean these, but I always replace anti-rattle clips. Take a look at the orientation. You'll see here that this is the orientation of this so that you know which ones to put back on. So to remove these, it's quite simple. Just use a needle nose flathead and remove the clip. And do the same thing on the other side. And then go ahead and use your wire brush here to just clean off any rust that is built up. You just have to knock it off. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and reinstall. Now to reinstall these, you'll see that it has a little tab right here and this tab sits up in this area in this cavity so we'll just press this in to its cavity it requires a little bit of massaging and you just press it in it'll be a nice firm fit once it's installed properly and it won't fall out so that's how you know you've got it on there correctly and we'll do the same with the other side here Alrighty, 
So we've got this on here. This side is a little bit looser, uh, but this side sticks in pretty well. Once you put the pads on, you'll be fine. So I'm gonna just install that at the end. Now, I do check these as well while they're out. You wanna make sure that they move in and out slowly. And if you need to service them, what you do, hold the bottom of the grommet here, and then twist and pull it out to break the seal. So you can see now the seal's broken. And we can go ahead, pull this out, set it end up right. Do the same thing on the other side. So I'm twisting it a little bit to help break the dirt seal. And then I'm holding the bottom of the grommet and pulling it straight out. And now you can just take a little bit of grease. It doesn't need a lot. So I just take a little bit of grease and make a small little cut. And then what I do is I just put the grease right inside of the grommet. Just a little dab, doesn't need a lot. Do that one more time, just a little dab. Does not need a lot. If you put too much in there, they won't fit properly. And then you can just move it in and out to smear it around. And then once you're done, you'll just press it back on. It slips right in. If you put too much, it won't go all the way back in. You'll have too much grease. So if you're having trouble getting these to go back in, you put too much grease on them. So I'm just twisting it, going back in and out, and then I'll just press it in. And it should cooperate with me and go right back on. What happens if you put too much grease on? What do you, what should you do? So if you put too much grease in this, it's fine. Literally, you can just pull this out, pull this back out, wipe some of the grease off, put it back in, and then wipe the grease off again until it literally just presses itself in and you just have to gently massage the grommet back on. That's perfect. So as you can see here, it moves in and out freely and this is ready to go back on. On all my brake jobs, I use just a little bit of Loctite 242. Whoop, that was a lot of it. This is a little too much, so I'm just gonna smear it onto the other side. This uh, really helps keep these from coming back out and backing out. If you torque them properly, they won't come back out, but I always like to take the extra step. So we're gonna put these to the side. The next thing we're gonna do is remove our rotor. Now, if you want, you can use a big hammer and you can whack the crap out of it. But that is working harder, not smarter. So what I use is just two bolts and I put them in on either side. I believe that this is an M8 by 1.25, but I will uh, be sure to put all the tools and sizes of everything that I use in the description of the video. And sometimes these are a little rusty. So you wanna make sure you get it threaded in there nice and straight. I'll use this to break the rotor loose. What this does is this bolt goes through the rotor, which the rotor has threads, and then it pulls against, uh, it pulls against the uh, rotor because it's pressing up against this flat spindle, the hub side. So I'm just gonna do this. And just take off the rotor. Now, once you have your rotor off, this is a perfect opportunity to inspect your parking brake shoes, right? You have your primary shoe, which is up front, and your secondary shoe, which is in the back. Now, your front shoe is going to be smaller than your rear shoe. Your front shoe is your guide shoe. That's what starts pressing up against the rotor first, the inside of the drum, the hat of the rotor. And then the secondary is what really provides all your braking power. So. This is your primary, this is your secondary, and this one's bigger. So if you have to replace this, the bigger side goes in the back. Now, once you have this off, it's a good idea just to actuate your parking brake system just to make sure that this is moving in and out freely. Um, we're not gonna mess with this because we tested it and it is moving in and out freely. I'm gonna go do it so you can see. So we always clean up the rotor because there's machining oil on it and you don't want that to get onto your pad. So I just lightly spray the rotor and I wipe it off with a clean cloth. And then I do the same thing on the other side. What do you spray it with? 
So I'm spraying this with, I'm using brake parts cleaner. This is non-chlorinated, non-flammable brake parts cleaner. That's just what I had on the truck. And what that does is that removes any grease or film from the rotor. And I'm going to be very careful not to touch any of the surfaces for the braking for the rest of the job now as I reinstall. So I always replace the rotors in the same place that the other ones were. So you can see here I have one little mark and two little mark. And I'll just line up the rotor as such. And those little marks are actually made by the act of putting the bolt in here and trying to press off the old one. So now that I have that on, I can go ahead and reinstall our brake caliper mounting bracket with our bolts that are 17 millimeter that already have Loctite on. So I always hand thread all my hardware on any job so that I don't cross thread anything when I go to put torque on it. If you cross thread this, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt. I'm just tightening up the bolts with a 17 millimeter and my half inch breaker bar. If you are a stickler for torque specs, the torque specs on this I will put in the video description, but I'm pretty sure that the caliper bracket to the spindle is 65 foot pounds, but check the video description. I will confirm that. So earlier I had mentioned that this upper one didn't fit very well. There's actually two different size clips, right? So if you look at this clip here, the pad on this clip, right, is smaller than the pad on this clip. So this one goes in the upper section that's wider, and this one goes in the smaller section that's not as wide. So you just shove that baby in there, and she won't fall out. Now I'm gonna grab my I'm gonna grab my pads here and open them up. And as you will see, the pads here have their own little backing plate. Some people will put grease on here to kind of help them from squeaking. But with these pads, I really just don't mess with them. What I am going to do is on the bottom of each of these, I'm going to put on my little uh, wear indicator. Now the now the wear indicator is just a metal clip. It goes on this portion right here and it has a little tab that sits into the recess here. So you just press it on like so and it presses right on. I'll do the same thing for this side, right? So I'm gonna face it down towards the rotor and just press it on. And with both of these pressed on, I can go ahead and install it. I'll install it I put the uh, clip side down first into its hole. I'll just raise this little clip up and then I'll just uh, fit her in as such. You may have a little trouble with this at home. Just take your time and you'll get her all stiff. All right, now that my pads are in, I can reinstall my caliper. To reinstall the caliper, you'll see here that the piston's just out a little bit. So I'm just gonna use my big pliers right here, these are actual oil filter pliers, and I'm just gonna depress it a little bit more. We did most of it earlier in the video when we used a screwdriver, and now it's perfectly flush. I'm being very careful not to damage this little O-ring right here, this grommet, and I'm also making sure that it doesn't bubble out, right? So this one bubbled out a little bit, so I just pressed it in. So you want this metal piece to be uh, totally clear of any of this rubber, because if it folds over, It'll pinch it, it'll break it, and eventually you'll have to replace your uh, caliper. So now I can go ahead and slip this on. And with this slipped on, I'll grab my two caliper mounting bolts here. I'll put Loctite on them as well. This is Loctite 242. This is blue Loctite 242. Just a little dab. That's enough for both of them, so I'm just gonna smear it around. And then I'll go ahead and remember, I always start my threads by hand before I put any sort of torque on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just snug up the upper caliper bolts. Now, you can also use a wrench here to hold this side, 
and then use a socket to torque this down. And we have blue Loctite on this as well. Check in, make sure it's nice and snug. That's tight. Alrighty, so once that's done, the next step will be is to test to make sure that your parking brake works, which we know on this vehicle it does. If it doesn't, you'll spin the rotor to the bottom, and this little hole here is how you adjust your parking brake. There's a small little lever and gear on the bottom and that's how you adjust it in and out. Now what we'll do with the old rotor is we'll just pull the plug out and we'll take this plug and we'll insert it right here. This will keep any you know water from getting in there that we don't want. Once this is all completed, you go ahead and reinstall your tire. Now on this one right here, you don't want to hit it too hard with an impact gun. We're going to hand tighten it. I'm just going to snug it up with this. Just a couple ugga duggas, and then I'm going to use my breaker bar to go through and tighten it up to spec. Just lower her down, nice and gently. Pull this out of the way. I'll go and set the parking brake, and then I'll go ahead and do the final torque by hand. Alrighty. Then you'll go ahead and take your vehicle for a test drive. You'll bead the brakes in, so you'll go up to 60 miles an hour, lightly apply the brakes, then firmly apply the brakes. Then you'll drive for another 10 minutes and do the same thing. That's gonna give you the longest service life. At this point, just clean up your area, take it for a test drive. Oh, most important thing, go and pump your brakes before you move the vehicle. All of the fluid is in the master cylinder and there's no fluid inside the caliper. So you want to push the pedal until the pedal is solid and hard like a rock. Thank you for watching this video of Fix It Forward where we showed you how to replace the rear brake pads and rotors on your 2014 Toyota RAV4. We just wanted to remind everybody that during the corona times to be able to keep social distancing at bay and also to wear a mask and stay safe. Thanks for watching this video and as always, happy motoring.